So what's going on everybody? Um, so recently I started shooting a lot of Super 8 film again and it made me realize that I never actually made a how-to video for shooting Super 8 film. I've done a bunch of other how-to film videos for like 35mm cameras and medium format cameras. But I took a look back at all my old Super 8 films that are on the Filter Red YouTube channel and I realized that I never made, you know, like a how-to, like just a quick startup guide for everybody out there that wants to shoot their own Super 8 films. So today we're just going to be going through a little quick five-step process on how you can start shooting your own Super 8 film. Um, for me, when I first started shooting Super 8 film, I actually did it because I was at a concert, a Daniel Caesar concert, and his background, like visualizer or whatever, was a Super 8 film. And I didn't know what it was at the time. I was at the concert with my brother and I just asked, like, I was asking him, I remember, like, what, what is that footage? Why does it look like that? That's so cool. It gives you that nostalgic feel. And so when I got home, I did a bunch of research on Super 8, on, you know, all the different film production, stuff like that. And I just went out and got a camera and I never looked back since. So I want to do the same for you, just show you and teach you a little bit about Super 8 film, the different uh, types of film and different types of cameras and things like that. And maybe a few reasons on why you would want to use Super 8 as opposed to a digital regular you know, video camera like there are so many nowadays. So let's go ahead and get into it. This is how to shoot Super 8 film. So the first step for actually shooting Super 8 film by yourself or you know with friends at home, whatever, is to get yourself a camera. The best place to look for a Super 8 camera is definitely your grandparents' attic or basement or any of your family, friends, any any older relatives you might have. Go really just, just scour their storage rooms, wherever, because a lot of people will not get rid of these Super 8 cameras because of nostalgia and just they just look cool, really, so if anybody sees them, you know, it's a talking point. But for me, none of my family members actually had a Super 8 camera on them or, you know, saved one from back in the day. So I had to go to eBay, which I will say is my second um, biggest recommendation for finding a Super 8 camera. You will have to do a bit of digging. There are tons and tons of options on eBay and you have to find ones that are working, that are tested, and you know you have to know a few things to look at before getting the camera. One being is the frames per second that it can go up to, um, any light settings there are, any, any lens attachments, things like that you always wanna look into before actually purchasing one. So for me, when I go onto eBay, I always look for working, tested, Super 8 cameras. If you know the brand or the specific model, that's also a really good way to go. These are both the Canon 514XL and the XLS models. These are both pretty much the same camera, just this one um, has the option to do audio recording with it, which I've never actually tried before. This one doesn't really work too, too well anymore because of some light leaks and stuff like that. It's also a bit heavier, so keep that in mind. Look for cameras that that might be suiting your needs for exactly what you're gonna be shooting. I can't tell you what you're gonna be using it for, but for me, the lighter weight model is much better because I like to do a lot of movement and just more fast paced handheld shots with Super 8 film. Moving forward though, something else to look at when you're actually buying a Super 8 camera is footage. See, before buying, email or contact the, the, the seller and just ask them, you know, do you have any test footage? Do you have anything that you've shot with this camera before? When's the last time you used it? Does the motor work? Have you tried seeing if the, the, the auto exposure works? Everything like that, because you want to know these before you get it. This is an expensive, um, the cameras themselves, you can get between you know, a hundred and a thousand dollars between what type of model you're going for really. But the film is where you're really gonna spend a lot of money. You don't wanna be shooting tons and tons of rolls only to find out afterwards that, you know, your camera doesn't even work because you're just gonna be devastated at A, not getting the footage and B, just wasting all that money. So make sure you go, you really do your diligence, you ask your questions before purchasing and then 
once you have the camera in mind, go ahead and click purchase because you're one step closer to actually shooting Super 8 film. All right, so now you have your camera and the next step is actually to be getting the film that you're gonna be shooting on. There's a few different options for purchasing your film, where you can get it and things like that and what kinds of film. Um, for me, my normal method of getting film is to go on Amazon, just Amazon or eBay really, I think they're the easiest to source from. Um, I know some people use a website or a, a company called Pro 8mm that offers film uh, cartridges with developing and processing services all in one. Um, I've tried them in the past. I didn't hate them, I didn't love them though. So for me, I usually stick with Kodak 50D or 500T um, and I get those off Amazon or eBay. I usually try and buy like four to eight rolls at a time. I don't shoot too much of it, so I, I don't need you know tons and tons of bulk rolls. If you do, um, I'd say look into Kodak and maybe get straight directly from them because I know they do like bulk shipping and stuff like that. But for my personal needs, B and H and Amazon always are the go-to. And then there's one other role that I usually like to use besides 50D and 500T, which is 200T. Um, that's like a daylight balance or a, a tungsten balanced film that you can kind of use really in any scenario. So that's that's a good film to use, but. In terms of film itself, I won't go too, too deep into it. You can comment below if you want me to, but, and show more examples of actual what the footage looks like. But for simplistic terms, 50D, you'll get anything in daylight. 500T, you'll get anything at nighttime. For the most part, there has to be some light, obviously. And it also, 500T, just because it's tungsten and just because it's 500, you will still be able to get footage at the middle of day, it does not matter. It might be a little bit overexposed compared to a 50D, but 500T, you'll get just about the darkest dark and the brightest bright, as long as it's not you know bright snow or sand, it's a little bit, little bit overexposed. But for the most part, this is your dark film, this is your daylight film. As long as you keep that in mind, the 200T can fit right in the middle, you can use that for whatever too. As long as you keep that in mind, you're good to go. Now that you have the film and you know a little bit more about it, go ahead, load your camera and get ready to start shooting because now is when the actual fun stuff gets to happen. For me, the first step before even loading film is always just turn the camera on and point it, point it at some light. Once you point it at light, you should start to get um, the, the light meter in your camera. For me, it's in the top left corner. Wherever the light meter is, it should start to move. That's a good sign that the auto exposure works. Say you point it in the dark, um, it'll probably be really uh, a low aperture. If you point it in the sunlight, it's gonna be a much higher aperture. And as long as that slider is kind of working, I don't, not all cameras have auto exposure, but as long as that slider is working, that's a good indicator that um, you will actually get footage. The second indicator that you'll actually get footage is turning the camera on and holding down the trigger. As long as you can hear that motor run, then you're good to go. For the most part, like I said, you never can be 100% sure about a Super 8 camera or any film camera for that matter until you actually get the video footage developed. Um, so those are the first two you know, steps or indicators. First is the the motor and second is the auto exposure. If both of those aren't working, you're gonna wanna do the, the simple check and see if there's actually batteries in the camera. That is many times the one thing that you need to get those things going. For me, my batteries are in the main compartment of the Super 8 camera right here at the top and it just takes two AA batteries. And as long as those are good to go, as long as they're, they're fresh batteries, the camera hopefully will work. And the next step is gonna be actually loading the film. Loading the film is super easy. You just have to take the cartridge out and in the front where the lens is you know, pointing towards, right here on that side of the camera, there's what's called the gate. That's what you know the lens is actually opening up to and it's what's gonna be shooting on the film because the film is just continuously rolling through there. So basically, you put your, your your film in just straight in 
and then kind of jam, like not jam it in, but press the backside in, make sure it clicks in, you're gonna close your door and you're ready to shoot. I know some people will use gaffer's tape to seal off the edges, make sure there's no light leaks. But for me, I kind of like the light leak um, look that Super 8 offers, so I usually just leave it open. And the next thing after you actually have film in your camera is going to be worrying about frames per second, um, light settings if your camera has that, and also focusing because I know a big hurdle for me when I first started shooting Super 8 film was actually just getting the focus correct every time because before that I had been shooting with a lot of VHS cameras and DSLR video cameras that I would use auto focus for or it just wasn't the same mechanism as a cinema focus would be. So make sure you, you don't you know you do some tests with the like focus rolling and stuff like that because it's a much different process than just pointing and shooting anywhere. You really have to make sure you're nailing focus with film especially especially when you're in the dark and it's a low aperture because things get blurry really fast. So always keep that in mind. But after you have your frames per second set, any light meter settings set, any, you know, all your focuses, you're ready to, you're ready to press record and start shooting. And at that point, I can't really tell you what to shoot. I just hope you get something really good and it's enjoyable because that's the best part about it for me. So you've, you've been shooting your role and you know, fingers crossed, hopefully everything is coming out perfectly the way that you wanted it to and looking just like outstanding Super 8 footage. Say you're midway through the roll. For my camera, the Canon 514XL, my camera has a footage indicator. So each cartridge of footage is 50 feet long, which will get you about two to three minutes of footage, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the FPS that you're shooting at. But for about 18 to 24 frames per second, you'll get about two to three minutes worth of footage. And for me, it's gonna show that in 50 feet worth of the indicator space. However, if you open up the film, the film cartridge back while you're shooting, then the indicator will go back to zero, which I tend to do often, depending on where I'm shooting at, if it's indoor or outdoor, I'll switch between 50D and 500T. So I'm always worried about um, how much footage is actually left. For me, as bad as this sounds, the, the best way to go about it is always kind of like leaving a mental note. Right before I take out the cartridge and change it to another one, I look at the indicator, see where I'm at, or, or just mentally make a note, okay, I shot about you know a minute's worth of footage with that this time. So I have a minute worth left, or whatever the case may be. Just make a mental note so you know, all right, this is how much footage I have left on this one versus the other one. When you are when you think you might be done with a roll, what I always like to do is just keep shooting extra, just keep, keep shooting, and then eventually you're gonna hear your camera sound a little bit different. This is what it sounds like normally. And when the film is finished, it will actually sound the same on the motor side, but you'll hear almost like a little click and like a hissing noise because the film spool isn't isn't like spinning the same way anymore now that the film is actually done. If you hear that noise and you think you're at the end of your roll, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the film out and open it up, not open the cartridge, but open the, the back of your camera and the gate is open, it'll say exposed right over it and that'll let you know, all right, your camera or your, your, your roll of film is done and you need to get the next one in. Now that you've actually finished shooting the roll, the next step when you get home or whatever you're doing is to find out how to process and develop it. For me, um, I live in Boston and there's nowhere that I can just go drive and drop it off. There is, the closest store is, uh, closest film lab is Cine Lab, which is in New Bedford, Massachusetts, I think, which isn't too far, but I don't really feel like driving a few hours every single time to drop it off. So Cine Lab is a great lab that you can go to. But for me recently, I've been going to, or shipping my film out to a lab in Maryland called Color Lab, or Color Lab MD, which has been absolutely outstanding. They have 
relatively good prices and good turnaround times. They're very communicative, which is one thing I didn't like so much about CineLab. Um, I'd email them, you know, where's my film? When can I expect it back? Hear back from them later or just get a, a, you know, an annoyed response. It'll get to you when we're finished up or something like that. So Color Lab has always been great. And I will say the 4K scans are absolutely unreal. I'll put some of those up on the screen so you can see what everything looks like. But it's it's out of this world. It looks like you know a natural or a raw footage from a cinema camera. So it's it's my favorite thing to shoot by far. Um, and the next thing, once you actually figure out what lab you want to go to, is to pack up and shoot or to pack and ship your film. Make sure you're going through all the right forms. Um, if you have any questions about the Color Lab MD forms, you can leave them in the comments. I'm not gonna go through step-by-step step how to do everything like that. It's pretty self-explanatory in terms of, just fill out their product forms and you'll be able to put that in with the package of all your film. Um, if you have your own USB drive or if you want them to upload it onto Google Drive or anything like that, they can do that as well, which is super, super convenient. and. Yeah, once everything is packed up and shipped off, you really, it's all just a waiting game, um, just like film photos would be. And once you get it back, you finally get to enjoy it, hopefully. I've had some roles that never turned out or never got back to me, but hopefully your first role really comes back and motivates you to just keep shooting more and more because although it is an expensive hobby or an expensive passion, it is absolutely unreal, the reward that you get out of it and having all those films to look back on, for me at least, is just just incredible and I couldn't be happier to have all them to look back on. So I hope that this video has helped you and has motivated you to start shooting Super 8 film. If you do, make sure you tag me on your posts, wherever you're posting the videos. I'd love to see them, see what you create. And let me know if you have any questions about cameras, developing, the forms for developing, anything to do with shooting, anything like that, I'm always happy to help, especially for Super 8. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a good day. Peace out.